Hello, everyone. I'm Chester44, also known as Fly, and welcome to this Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity. Last episode, I believe we'd finished doing a bunch of small missions that we had and talking. I did it just yesterday. How could I have already forgotten? Anyway, with that handled... I think we're going to take a little detour for a little while. While we could continue on with the main story, I think instead we're going to take a quick trip over to the side and take a look at the DLC, the White March. We're just over the level for it, so let's see what we can do in here. This might be interesting. Onward to Stalwart Village. Your party is considered high level for the content in the White March. If you would like, the critical path can be increased to dif in difficulty to give you more of a challenge. The rewards you receive will be the same regardless of the option you choose. Your choice cannot be changed once it has been selected. I cannot remember which I'm supposed to choose. I don't know which is which. Give me just a moment. Okay, what I want to click is standard. High level turns everything to a higher level. <laughs> it's it's very confusing there. You set out for Stalwart. The White March rises up in the distance, stretching to the north and south as far as the eye can see. It beckons to you with peaks like broken fingers. The road thins to a tattered ribbon, and the shadow of the mountains falls across your path. You've barely begun your climb when the darkening sky pummels you with hailstones and turns the ground beneath you to ice. You press on. The air grows thin, and the treacherous mountain passes funnel screeching winds past your ears. A blizzard forces you to make camp for three days, huddling for safety while snow piles around your refuge. At last the weather clears, and you approach Stalwart under a crisp blue sky. There's a noise, high and sharp, coming from the village that sounds at first like another frozen gale. But when you top the rise and reach the village's wooden gates, you see what lies beyond them. So I'm guessing something happened. It's Darzir! With a whole pack of them! We can take these bastards! Oh boy. Well, we got a couple constructions completed, so we've got a supplicant. We can pay them off very easily. And also, construction was completed of the t on the towers. Uh, let me just throw something in here. Um, let's go with the training grounds. Now then, kill Darzir in the s in Stalwart Village. Crag Ogre! Let's go! Right, get on killing. Crag Ogre Cannoneers. Oh, great, Let's so they go. wield entire freaking cannons. Oh, we got him. But I have a feeling there's gonna be more around here. Whoever was there is gone now. But things are not going well, it seems. These smelters haven't seen use in a long time. Okay, there's none up here. Oh, wait, something we can loot here. Hammer and chisel. Sure, I'll take it. Well, look at what each of these items are once we've actually gone through. Because, uh, there seems to be a bit of a fight going on. Look out! More of them by the fishery! On it. Oh, they've got big wolves, too. Let's go! Okay, there's those two dealt with. Oh, hold on, I see another. So they appear to be having a problem with, uh... 
ogres around here. Oh, hello. More of them. Oh, good. Let's Charmed go. that one. Let's go. Well done. I made you kill your friend. This door appears to be barred from the inside. It does not budge. Okay, there's another one of these winter wolves. Two of them, in fact. Okay, there's those two dead. Hello, Sarah. Good of you to join in. <laughs> Do enjoy the watching. We Just... need help. Oh. Help! This way! On it! Oh boy. Why are you two not attacking? Do things. Let's go. Let's go. And get the cannon here. Got him. Ooh, Dorans, you just barely survived. No problem. Oh, we got another one over here. Let Durin's get some of his health back first. Stalwart Fishery. This door appears to be barred from the inside. It does not budge. Yeah, for understandable reasons. Go on, get this over. Next. There goes that cannoneer. Those things hit hard. I guess we should probably focus a little bit on those cannoneers. Looks like we've almost made it to the west side. Got some more here. Finish him. There you go. Let's see. The Gref's rest. Let me guess. Doors locked. Can't open. Yep, barred from the inside. All the doors are barred. Again, very understandable. Another cannoneer. Get on it. Come on. Down goes the cannoneer. Can't take the camping supplies at the moment, because we're full up. Oh, Adair leveled up. We'll level you up in a minute. Let's, uh, try and deal with these. Uh, you three actually turn and go for the cannoneer. Let's go. Interesting that the cannoneer got charmed onto our side and is now shooting his war leader in the back. I love these random dominations. Let's go! 
And the war leader got charmed. I think. Oh, there we go. Come on, finish him. There we go. There we go. You? You're the one Renan Guild sent for. She'll want to speak with you. Her house is just up that way, next to the Gref's rest. The messenger pants, waving smoke away from his face. Katie's house is burning! Hurry! They're both in there! Help! The hut's coming down! Oh, shit. The roof of this hut is almost entirely enveloped in flames, lighting the snow in stark orange hues. Several beams have been reduced to ember-dotted husks. Through the hut's threshold, you can see only billowing smoke. Fire roars as it climbs the timbers. The air feels hot, thick and hot, and the building is a maze of flame. Withstanding the smoke and navigating the fire will be a challenge. Let me drop a save before I try this. I have a feeling we're going to need quite a few things. Perception con, strength dex. I have a lot of resolve, but I need a lot of these other things. Maybe I can grab a bit of food to make something. Anything here? Two con, one perception. Might would actually be a good thing. Okay, I think I can do it just by eating a few pieces of food. Um... Let's see. Intellect and perception is actually interesting there. That's just perception. Now you know what? Let's let's just um, make some food here quickly. Actually, we do have that already. Uh. That's actually surprisingly good. But, um, we'll make one of these for the extra might. And I feel like we'll need the intellect and perception. We've got one of those. And, uh, also want one of these. Hmm. So, you eat that, and also eat that. Alright, let's see what we can do in here. You leap over the burning threshold, plunging past a veil of smoke. Inside the house, fire has pitted the walls and beams, and a thick haze rolls through the building. It's hard to see even a few feet ahead, save for the occasional glimpse of glowing embers. One moment, please. Alright, crouch down to avoid the smoke. You move onward through a haze of heat and soot. The hut groans and shifts as the blaze grows. With a mighty groan, the burning beam comes crashing down. Caught off guard, you are pinned beneath the heavy log. Push the beam away. Even reeling from the impact, you are still able to heave the debris away with relative ease. You get back on your feet, a little winded from the ordeal. A sudden flashover singes your arms. It doesn't stop you, but the pain steadily grows. Pressing forward, you come at last to a wider room. To the left is a man, the source of the faint cries for help. His, he ha he stands trapped beneath, behind a curtain of flame, arms raised to ward off the heat. It may be impossible to reach him without quenching the fires first. To the right, a woman lies unconscious beneath what appears to have once been the roof. She's small, but the rebel trapping her looks heavy. Smoke winds its way up and out into the open air, obscuring all sight of the outside. Examine the, right, the situation on the right. The woman is trapped beneath a considerable amount of rubble, including a heavy crossbeam. A purpling bruise on her temple suggests that she was struck as the debris fell. On her outflung hand, you can just make out the glint of a ring. 
Try to lift the rubble off the human. The crossbeam has provided the woman with some protection against the scattered debris that fell alongside it, but the beam itself is now weighed down. You grip the end of the beam and, using every ounce of strength, strain to lift it clear. The beam shifts slightly. Keep trying. After a period of fruitless struggle, the beam finally begins to rise by slow degrees. With one great and final effort, you heave the last of the rubble clear of the woman. Though still unconscious, the woman is free of the rubble and can now be moved. You approach the other victim. Smoke clogs your lungs and the heat has become unbearable. You will collapse soon. Help! Please help me! A man dressed in the haphazard armor of a local guard stands trapped at one side of the house. Fire has worked its way across the floorboards, blocking all escape. I have a feeling one of our ice spells that Aloth had might have been able to do here. But try to reach for the man through the flames. You move toward him, but the flames scald your arms. He also tries to move toward you, but the flames rise higher and block his path. You fight to remain conscious, but exhaustion and lack of air do their work. You're soon overwhelmed and collapse to the ground. Darkness descends. In the hazy state of unconsciousness that follows, the sounds of shouting and the crash of burning timber drift in and out of your hearing. You wake some time later to find Adair standing nearby, having dragged you to safety. They're gone. Both of them. I have a better idea. I think I know what we can do. Aloth, what is your strength? You've got might 20. Your survival is high enough. I think we should send you in. What what spell what uh, spells do you have? You might be able to do this. We'll send you in, Aloth. You need survival five. The air is thick with acrid black smoke. Tears stream from Aloth's eyes and it becomes difficult to walk as fatigue sets in. Aloth moves onward. Okay. Push the beam away. Might ten. Situation on the left. Chill fog. Aloth concentrates on the sequence of words that will summon forth frost magic. Under the chilly onslaught, the fires subside, providing a narrow escape route for the guard. God bless you. I thought that was the end. Come on, we should both get clear of this place. He runs past Aloth, making a dash for the exit. And then he passes out. <sighs> At least Brooklyn. it's not Gilded Vale. Thank the gods, he's alive. So we kind of have a tough choice here. Give me a moment. So his survival is not high enough to survive that, and he can only save one. Our survival is high enough, but we don't have any spells that can do anything. You, I don't think, have any spells that would work. Aloth's constitution needs to be boosted up. If we do that, we might be able to get through. I wish I could boost survival, but I don't think that's something I can do. At the very least, I'll try and boost Constitution. One of these things does that, I think. It's intellect and Perception. I think that's Perception. Displaced Image. Hmm. Poultry. I'll have you eat a poultry, oh, see if that helps at all. I heard living in a place like this. It's a wonder anybody stayed at all. We'll give it one more try here. Nope, it's not enough. Hold on. They're gone. Both of them. So it seems like we have a tough choice. Finally, some proper weather. We can either send Aloth in, who is only able to save the man, or we can send me in and save the woman. Because I can't put out the the uh I can't put out the fire. I don't think Kana has the ability either. He doesn't have enough survival. 
The only one who has survival in order to last long enough to do all of these is Sagani, Adair, and Laniara. But they don't have the, uh, the spell needed in order to put out the fire and save the man. It's kind of a tough choice here. Very well. I'm the best one who can actually go through a lot of this. Put the beam away. I can't get to him. I'm just unable. Carry the woman out. The woman is of a slight frame and carrying her proves to be easier than freeing her from the rubble. You hoist her carefully onto your shoulder. Beset by smoke-clogged air, blistering heat, and burning debris, you are rapidly losing strength. With every passing moment, survival becomes more unlikely. Keeping a firm hold upon the unconscious woman, you turn for the exit. You clear the fallen beam with easy grace, avoiding the scattered embers and debris underfoot. The smoke clouds your vision and makes it difficult to breathe, but you stagger onward. At last, you come to the door, rushing out of the blaze and into the mountain air. Katie, thank the gods you saved her. You all right? I was sure that thing was coming down and taking you with it. The man wipes his brow and stares up at the collapsing house. At least you got Katie out when you did. As for poor Legolder... His eyes widen as a section of the roof collapses. He looks away, shaking his head. You'll look like you could use a drink. Take this over to Hayfrix and have one on me. He flips you a couple flat carved bones. Well, we tried, there just wasn't much we could do. We could only save one. Ring of Changing Halt with plus three resolve. It's pretty good. Alright. Uh, Adair, you are able to level up. Let's give you... I guess Athletics is fine. As for the skill... I think you've already got the uh, weapon specialization, so... Uh, Unbending is an ability. Confident... No... No, actually, yeah. Confident aim is pretty good. Guardian stance. Critical defense. Clear out. Into the fray. Overbearing guard. Fearless. Immunity to, to frightened and terrified. That's actually pretty good. You know what? We'll go with fearless. Okay. And major fatigue for me. Which is a little bit of a problem. Alright. So, we need to go to Renin Guild. Afterwards, we'll find a place we can get some rest. Renin Guild will likely tell us something. You see a middle-aged woman and a younger man locked in an argument. Both wear clothes streaked with blood and dirt. The young man turns to the woman, a fresh cut visible below his eye. They've destroyed the stockade, Mother! It's... Enough. They're gone. She holds up a hand, which is missing the final joint of the ring finger. But it's her sh voice, sharp and steely, that silences the young man. As he glowers at his toes, she turns to you with dark circles under her eyes and a smile pulled taut across her thin lips. The Deliverer of Cadnua. Thank you for making the journey. Abida knows it's a long one. <sighs> well, I'm sure you wagered on a more civilized welcome. Still, we're much obliged for your capable intervention. She shoots the young man a brief but stern glare. He pulls a knife from his belt and an apple from his pocket and sets to work. It's, there's no trouble. I'm here to help however I can. Then perhaps you can help us find something. She folds the page in her hand with a quick and merciless pinch. Stalwart isn't much more than a grease stain on a map. What roads we've got in the White March are basically tracks in the snow. And for every traitor or adventurer that comes through, three of our own leave for good. But it weren't always so. There was a time when kings and queens sent their firstborn to these mountains, when the White March was the envy of empires. Her eyes shine, and for an instant, she looks like a much younger woman. 
Oh, how the mighty have fallen. What is it? What an era that must have been for the White March. The Pargrin Dwarves transformed the White March once. We could bring some of that greatness back to Stalwart. But we need the White Forge. She raises the map and taps a spot in the middle of a white and gray expanse. I know of it. Then you'll know that no one's felt as much as a summery breeze from the White Forge for over 200 years. I'm hoping you can do something about that. She ignores the young man who shakes his head at the crackling logs. How so? We've been trying to breach Durgan's battery for over a year now. Problem is, the other expeditions can't so much as dent the front door. She rubs at her fatigued, shadowed eyes. Tell me about these other expeditions. A dozen different groups have come through at our request, and several more besides. Been hoping that one of them could clear the way through Durgan's battery. But young or old, green or seasoned, it don't seem to matter. They cast their spells, chisel at the door, and search the grounds until they've worn new treads into the old stone. The lucky ones eventually go home. Plenty more find themselves on the wrong side of a blizzard, or an ogre raiding party. And why the sudden interest in the White Forge? We're an old mining town. Or we were until the Adirans pulled out and left us with a half-dug mineshaft and something resembling an inn. She thumps the sturdy wooden wall with her fist. Since then, it's been a steady decline. You've seen the roads. Isn't much we can produce that the Valians can't ship cheaper. But the White Forge... Well, if we could fire it up again and start producing Durgan steel or something close to it, wouldn't matter if we're in the White March or the Living Lands. Business would come. She folds her arms and gives you a stiff nod. The young man says nothing, but he tosses a sliver of the apple peel into the fireplace. And that's why you need my help. That's the long and short of it. We're laborers and fisherfolk, not adventurers. But Durgan Steel could put Stalwart on the map again. Open up the mines, bring in new business. We just need the White Forge. Why is Durgan Steel so special? Because you can shave stone with it, cleave cast iron in two, and the stuff's as rare as it is remarkable. In her enthusiasm, Renengild shifts on the balls of her feet. She props one bent arm on the other, pointing distractedly toward the eaves of the house. If you had a suit of armor made out of that, bet people get tired of trying to stab you after a while and just give up. If we could make something even half as good, we'd have a market at our doorstep and work enough for all of Stalwart. For a split second, her gaze flickers to Aldrich. How is it no one's gotten into Durgan's battery yet? <laughs> Where should I start? Ogres, blizzards, or sheer damned inaccessibility? She takes the items off in her fingers. It ain't for lack of trying, I'll tell you that much. Got untold riches in Durgan steel lying just inside, and never mind the White Forge itself. The Adirans who first settled Stalwart tried to crack it. So did the Valians, and every other cocky adventurer with more metal than sense. She folds her arms, shaking her head at a pitted floorboard. But the place has a funny way of sealing itself up. Front door stays shut, the tower entrances are clogged with rubble, and it's been impossible to blast a way in. Renengild trails off, and for a moment the room is silent, but for the popping and cracking of the fire. What happened to Durgan's battery? It don't bear dwelling on. There's too many superstitions about that place as it is. She waves her mangled hand in a broad crescent, averting her gaze. Killed each other off. Or so the old books say. He glares at Renengild through hooded eyes. Plenty of tales to go around, but none of them open the battery. And the last thing people need is another reason to fear the place. Kith do enjoy their ghost stories, though the Glanfathans take theirs very seriously. Whatever it was, the other Pargrin dwarven settlements in the White March, Bone Picker, the Hawk, and the rest, emptied out not long after, moved to gentler, greener lands. Had the right idea, if you ask me. I don't see why you need the White Forge to make good steel. Finally, someone talking sense. He raises his knife and half-peeled apple to the fire in a dramatic gesture of exasperation. Durgan Steel wasn't just good. It was some of the best. We need the best if we're going to keep Stalwart alive. She glares at Aldrich even while she speaks to you. No one alive today has seen the White Forge, but the old stories tell that it was powerful, glowed white-hot and gave off a steady, even heat, unlike any other furnace. Let better-schooled folk puzzle over how the thing was built. I just want to see it put to use. And tell me about the Pargrin dwarves. Pargrin's a word in their language. 
means traveler. They've been wanderers for generations, but I couldn't tell you much more. All right, then. Any idea of where I should begin? The battery's up the mountain to the north. A good hike away. She jerks her head in the direction of the slope behind the house. Near Galvino's place, huh? Uldrich says it in a breezy tone, but Renengild falls suddenly silent, consternation hardening the lines on her face. He smiles and draws his knife across the apple again. So it is. Though I was going to suggest dealing with that ogre camp before anything. Who's Galvino? Mestre Galvino, as the old crosspatch prefers it. Lives by himself and keeps the wilder and beasts at bay through sheer foulness of his temper. <laughs> Durance, you could, prob you could probably teach him a few things. She means to say he's a skilled smith and animancer, who's lived in the shadow of Durgan's battery for over a decade. And by animancy's flimsy standards, that makes him an expert, does it? Alof folds his arms. And he butters his bread on both sides and fits his left shoe before his right. But that's neither here nor there. I see. Ain't nobody here fond of the man, but he's a clever hand and a quick study. It's a fool who thinks he stayed so close to the battery without figuring something about it. You said as much to the last party, and we haven't seen hide nor hair of him since. Maybe they didn't run afoul of Baragon's ogres after all. Uldrich shrugs and turns back to the fire. Just watch your step. Galvino's place is a ways east of the battery, and folk who pass it bring unsettling tales. All right, tell me about the ogre camp. Belongs to flames that whisper. Matron Baragon's clan. Hunters tell me they've been active of late. Hunting elk and otherwise minding their own damn business. He pops an apple wedge into his mouth and chews it aggressively. Minding their own business. Never mind the latest expedition's disappearance or the broken stockade. She pinches the bridge of her nose, squinting. I'm saying we shouldn't agitate him further. He makes to toss another slice of peel into the fire, but he fumbles and drops his knife. He bends to pick it up, cursing. What does this matron have to do with anything? The brawl outside was just the latest patch of trouble. The ogre clans are getting bolder, and we'll all sleep easier knowing they aren't circling our walls. Also, Baragons like to have whatever the last expedition found. Rumor has it they disappeared near her turf. She crosses her arms and looks over to Uldric. Killing a matron will only make our problems worse. The way to approach Baragon is with your hands held high. <sighs> if anyone could parlay with an ogre, I suppose it'd be you. But they aren't known for their patience with Prattle. I got it. Good. Before you leave town, stop by the Grave's Rest. Most visitors to Stalward spend some time there, so Hafric and his patrons may be able to give you the lay of the land. I don't know about you, but I'm parched all of a sudden. All right, thank you. We'll speak with you two more after in the next episode, because this one's gone on about long enough. We've got much to do, and at least now we know what's going to be happening. Next episode, we'll start looking around here a bit more and see if we can figure out what sort of quests we'll have and more information and the like. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I am Chester44, also known as Falai. That is Laniara, Adair, Dorins, Aloth, Kana, and Sagani. This has been a Let's Play of Pillars of Eternity, and I shall see you all next time.